First Smoke family, we have a great episode for you today. Astor Club, straight out of New York City. Guess what? What it was like living in New York City on 9-11. What it was like to move to Thailand for years after. The real story about the pith. They give us the history of the pith in New York City. Also, huge shout out Drip Hydro. If you wanna try Drip Hydro, hit us with an email, family at firstsmokeoftheday.com. Let us know, I wanna try Drip Hydro. We will get you connected. Grow Generation Grow Stores. One of the premier sponsors, also someone I use in my daily life. I'm always stopping by, picking up carbon filters, nutrients, cloning supplies, you know the ABCs. Also, Dr. Dabber drdabber.com go on our website all of our discount codes are on the site fsotd.com and you can get discounts on growgen drip dr dabber and mood trays shout out mood trays we have merch we have some dope rolling trays we have a bunch of cool stuff on the site hit the site fsotd.com and we're about to get rolling astro club new york city let's go it's one of my favorite spots my homie matt Ben, they got lit, it's fired up in here. Take a look around. It's like my ground zero when I'm in New York. This is where I come get right. These guys are incredible hosts. One of the things yeah. I was hoping we could get to the bottom of this interview is who brought the haze to New York? <laughs> the pith. The to pith. New York? How do you think it originally landed? Oh, that was, uh, so <laughs> me and Ben and, and our other partner, Josh, we're all from different segments of New York. And from that, we've been able to just call in from everybody, from the activists to the club world. I worked a lot in hip hop, streetwear, and things like that. And it's been a lot of fun putting everything that we worked for so long all together in one place. Yo, what's up, everybody? We're back, man. It's episode 93, first smoke of the day. It's your boy, Pack here in the building. We're live in New York City. I'm with my co-host, Black Leaf, as always. Big Lower East Side smoke. And we're joined by Ben and Matt of the Astro Club at the Astro Club right here Thank in New York guys. City. Thanks for coming on, boys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Absolutely. for having us. <laughs> <laughs> we're a little bit burned from the 420 Dude, festivities. Dude, it's the day after 420. Yeah. Everybody's been going crazy. You guys have had a lot of dope events. How's everything been so far? I know we went to the, the rooftop, and then you had one late last night till what, 2 a.m.? 3 a.m. 3 a.m., yeah. maybe, you know? Yeah. So I it's mean, been four, four things in three days. It's a lot, but um, it's fun, you know? This is like the fun time, the funnest week of the year, really. So we we got one more to cap it off tomorrow. A little smoke dizzy session, and I can't wait to just sleep for three days straight. And you guys have been doing this because we we were here last year, and the city was lit up, and yeah. we were right here at the Astro Club. Yep. Yeah. So last year we uh, us and Doja spoke about trying to get something together, and we got everybody you know at Washington Square Park, and you know. It's been done before but not you know you'd have 50 people in the park smoking weed and last year all of a sudden there was you know thousands and this year was double that and i mean it's just incredible to see like you know everybody just coming together to smoke with no no motive no anything you know just this everybody unity. like bringing their craft out too from like the the bigger players and brands to like the people who are just themselves, this is what I do. You see a little bit of everything, which is really dope. And that's always been the dream, really, is just that everyone can do whatever they want. Whoever yep. wants to sell weed, whoever's passionate about it, do your thing. Like, same as the guy selling sunflowers or tomatoes or whatever. So that was, it, it's a sweet moment right now in New York. Uh, it's a special moment in time. And yeah, yesterday, 420 was an amazing moment. This year was also really incredible because we went from like last year was really like a east west, you know, all the New York and, you know, Cali brands together. And this year we had such an international presence, you know, people from Spain and everywhere, France. And, you know, it's cool to That's see everybody come in. Yeah, it's very true. Also was like the main market came. Philly was there. Every like like all these other people from Delaware, like you Jersey. Know, they and, everybody can you know conjoined to come to the city and i'd say like the city right now is the most popping spot to have your 420 right now for sure 
Yeah, I mean, and then we had the Zao Olympics on 419, and like, really look, dope. I've never, New York has never seen a cannabis event like that, you know, like, it was just incredible to see everybody come together, and like, I don't know, it was just, it was a wild night, it was cool to see these East Coast brands highlighted, and, and the Cali brands and the big brands, bigging them up and putting them up and out there. It's happening, it's happening. We're getting into more like a global market, I feel like. It's less and less about what state you're from and more and more about your brand, your product, what you're pushing and the ground you're able to cover and how many people are fucking with you in those different places. I feel like. Yeah. The world is so small right now. Like, uh, it was like 30 years before there was a new weed product, a new weed thing before vape pens came out basically right now. It's like every six months, every year, something new now, they got the Piatella in Europe and all everyone went out there, saw this amazing thing, brought it back to New York. The whole world is memeing, talking about, loves it, hates it. Everyone wants to try it. And it's just amazing. So again, the weed community has got like, like the, everything has gotten small, unified. It's really easy to talk to everybody and share ideas. And New York has always been the center of, you know, ideas, creativity and, that's what's going on right now, I think. Well, you guys, you, this place is a center of creativity. The people that you have fall through this location, the pictures you guys post online, it's epic. Again, that's the cannabis. That's the plant, man. That's what's so amazing about weed is that, like, you have rap star, superstar, retired PT teacher, uh, you know, DA, uh, downtown graffiti artists all hanging out together. And that's, that's the weed. That's the plant. That's why we love it. Shout out to the DA. <laughs> ADS, <laughs> ADS. Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. Dude, they're smoking. <laughs> yeah. NYC has always been like a melting pot for like all culture, you yeah. know? So just taking it back, like where are you guys coming from? Like how did this all come about? The path leading up to this. So me and Ben, both like Ben's <clears throat> five years older than me. I went to Amsterdam when I was 16. Um, so he went approximately the same year as me. It was like the end of the Gilder and like, we just been weed heads, you know, like everybody for like, when I was in high school, everybody saved up to go to Cancun. Well, I saved up to go to Amsterdam and told my parents we were going to London, Paris and Amsterdam. And the whole trip was just to go to Amsterdam so we could smoke like the best weed. And like, I probably haven't missed more than a week since that trip, you know, smoking weed. Like it's, it's been, a it's been a crazy ride and you know ben like had the same thing like we loved amsterdam we loved that i vibe. started going when i was 16 also actually yeah i went to the cannabis cup i think it was number seven or something or six or eight when uh the year the white widow won um what's that late 90s early 2000s late 90s that was like 96 i think something like that so i always loved amsterdam went there all the time too both of us always had the dream of like, all I wanted to do is either open a coffee shop in Amsterdam or open an Amsterdam coffee shop in New York. But both of those just seemed like complete pipe dreams, you know? I didn't think that New York was ever have it. The pipe dream was Amsterdam because that was the only place. It's, yeah. it's amazing to see where we are. So you know? I sold a lot of weed in college, but um, I feel bad for college kids today. I don't know how these kids can afford to like pay for anything because they can't sell weed anymore they're sort they're out of business all the bodegas like how are college kids supposed to fucking make a living Rough. <laughs> but anyway so and i kind of gave up on the dream I, I moved to thailand uh lived there for 15 years doing nothing not weed related things i grew it wasn't okay to smoke weed then there you couldn't definitely not okay to grow weed there but um grew my own weed there for 10 of the 15 years and kind of spend a lot of time on the forums. So this was back, I started, you know, 18 years ago, no, 20 years ago, pretty much. So on the forums, just like learning from the forums, how to grow, connecting with people like, you know, JJ NYC from Top Dog and Sog Army and all the guys who were, you know, on the forums back in the day and moved back to New York and Normal contacted me or they sent out an email looking for people to join with them. I had nothing to do. So I, they hired, they 
brought me on to do events and organize the community, which is something I'd never done before. And after three years of doing that, things were going really well. We were just doing a ton of events. We had the whole community involved. This was pre before the MRTA passed the law that legalized cannabis in New York. Um, and at that point, I kind of thought the legalization was never going to happen. <laughs> so I was like, fuck it. I'm not waiting any longer. I'm just going to do what I want to do. There was another place that we used to go to before that closed. I used to, they were the, really the first ones to open a spot in the city. And I used to go there to just get away from family, get away from everything. And when they closed, I didn't have anywhere to go. So I was just like, fuck it. Just doing, doing the thing that I want to do. Fucking kept on thinking about the cheesy sign. Your vibe attracts your tribe, you know, but, and it's cheesy, but it's true too. I was just like, I'm going to just get this vibe going, just get a place where we can just hang out. And I didn't know what was going to come of it. Definitely didn't imagine anything like this at all. And, uh, but here we are. And Matt was there from day one. Uh, he was running a CBD shop, but just supporting the hell out of the place. Every day he'd be like, going walking around the neighborhood being telling everybody who knew who smoked weed hey there's this place you can go you can get amazing weed and you can hang out comfortably and smoke weed and people would be like no nah, i'm not going <laughs> and we would look at each other and just be like what is going on but that's that's like everything in life kind of like and now people are like those same people are like how the hell do i get in please please let me in so i uh always sold weed you know i the the realest job i had was a I, I was going to be a stockbroker and that was like the biggest hustle and i felt like i was robbing people more than anything i actually worked for the guy who uh who was vin diesel in the boiler room he got escorted out of the office the first week i was there um so i just always sold weed and like you know um i used to go to a life a life was like the spot and uh dice and and chris vidal introduced me to this guy bamboo from uh he lives out in california og he uh had a delivery service and uh as soon as i smelled the weed i was like yo that smells like amsterdam i was like let, let me smoke some of that and like we became friends and eventually we became partners in his delivery service and we i ran the delivery service out of the back of a life from 2008 to 2012 like it was not really ran out of it like it was just me on my phone hanging out with my friends and you know we had uh we had a really cool clientele you know we i, I had always my degree which i never finished was management of a musical entity so my dream was always to work in music and i i worked a little i interned for like uh g units sort of management before they were g unit and i was always around and then like i started selling weed so that had me become friends with all these guys and you know it was great um went on for a few years uh my partner had some legal issues um and a da the da in california sent a letter to the da in new york to press charges on me so I spent years waiting for the feds to like knock down my door, like barely selling weed, just sort of trying to figure out what I was doing while I was selling weed. I actually got really into uh, street art and stuff like I always loved it. So I collected a lot of Banksy's. So that sort of helped me, you know, just get past those years where I wasn't, you know, moving anything and selling anything. And, uh, you know, those a life days were, were golden. Like, you know, I met everybody from currency to like you know we were selling to the biggest rappers and now coming back like seeing all these people i used to go to dd 172 and like i run into people now there was dame dash's old spot and it was where currency used to record it was where they did uh pilot talk one and two i believe i think it was Damn. both of them there i thought but, those albums heavy yeah they were great Stop. albums and like yeah brady watt that's what got like, me that's what got me on papers and smoking weed was like the early currency whiz days of like whiz being in a jacuzzi showing everyone how to roll joints and shit like <laughs> just just crazy times that like it made you want to smoke a lot more weed than you already were it was like more of the the vibe to it Whoa. so that, that time in that era i know exactly when you're talking about yeah it was it was an incredible time and like most of the weed then was still like it was it was it was that switch we we're starting to get really good weed it really wasn't out there like no bamboo really brought that first cali shit out to new york we were 
the very first people with Girl Scout cookies. We had the seeded Girl Scout cookies. You'd get an eighth of it and there'd be a gram and a half of seeds. And it was a hundred dollar eighth. Nobody complained about it. Like, you know, and, and me and Burner have like, you know, we talk about the, the seeded fucking Girl Scout. Like this shit was the best. And the cherry pie was around at the same time, super seeded. And it was, uh, you know, it brought everybody around. And, you know, we, I didn't see currency for, I don't know, five, seven years. And I ran into him, what, two years ago, three years ago, and took him a second. He's like, you got the best weed I've ever smoked, you know? So it's, it's cool to have everybody come back around and, you know, like calling in all my, my friends from street art and streetwear and stuff and getting them all over here and, you know, meeting these incredible people and like having these guys that are now my friends that, you know, I've been listening to and you know since I was 14 and you know it's all weed that brings that all together. Yo family if you want to know where to get all the dope exclusive merch you see us rocking on the show go to shop.fsotd.com it's free shipping on all domestic orders we're trying to hook up the whole family we want you guys to rock the merch and show us you're a part of the family all the ashtrays are on there the lighters are on there the trays are on there the stonewash hoodie is on there the family ties tea is sold out you should have moved quicker um, and also <laughs> Yo, tag us in photos. Let us know you're rocking the merch, you're rolling up on the tray, you're watching firstsmokeoftheday.com. Let us know how you first smoke of the day. Hit us up on Instagram, first smoke of the day. I used to beg for the good Girl Scout cookies. We'd get the seeded batches and I'm like, this is what people were hype. This is what they're talking about on the, and we would be like, now flip forward or fast forward, what people would do for those seeds in those batches. I know somebody who has those seeds. I had them. My I had them in storage. My friend has a bunch of them now. All right, a we'll lot. get into that on off the mic. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's after the podcast. You remember Let's get those seeds before this episode goes out. <laughs> all right. Yeah. You remember the the colors on that that weed? It would be like three, four different colors. It was so. I mean, that was that was my favorite. That's all I wanted to smoke. Yeah. Spire. Potent too. Super potent. Potent. Loud and potent. So, I mean, you, we kind of braze over what, 15 years in Thailand. Yeah. That's nothing light. Like what, what happened? Did you just like take a trip there and then say, I'm staying or was it planned? This was like right after nine 11, basically. So, and I was in the city for nine 11, saw the tower fall. Like talk about that, that day. <laughs> like, what were you doing that day? Cause that's, I mean, I was in fucking middle school and in my school, we put on the news and it was like. You went home to your parents at the end of the day. In it was Florida. like they came and picked us up early type shit. It was wild. wild so that day. was uh, one of the worst jobs I ever had. I was working as a paralegal at a law firm. I had to, <laughs> but so I, I had to go to work early that day and I got out of the subway and everybody was looking up and there was like all this paper falling down. And uh, as I was looking up, the second plane hit the World Trade Center and I don't know what was going on at all. I just, I, I thought it was going to be like a movie where like everybody starts stampeding. So I just ducked into a little like stairwell or a little like entrance to a building and people were just standing around shocked. So I just walked to work, got there. They were like, we don't know if we can go home or not. Uh, or the boss didn't say you could go home yet. I was like, you guys go home. Everybody go the fuck home right now. They were like, well, we don't know. And my mom worked in the world trade center. Uh, so I ran upstairs, cell phones weren't working and I ran upstairs to try and call her and I just got her voicemail. I left her a message. I was like, something terrible's happened. Call me soon as you can. Turned out she wasn't working there that day. She was dry. She was in Chicago that day, but I didn't know that it took me like four hours to find that out. I ran down, got on the first subway out of there. Then last, actually the last subway out of there, the people that I worked with were still there waiting for the boss to tell them to go home, told them, get the fuck out, go home, ran down on the subway, subway went like three stops and then stopped and all the lights went out. Um, we finally got out of the subway, walked upstairs and everybody was walking up towards us covered in dust and suit. So all those people that wouldn't listen to me and leave there were covered in you know, like Carson, who knows what, what it is and walked home and, you know, went on the city smelt like, like a, you know, just burning plastic for six months. There were siren. Every time you'd hear a siren, you wouldn't know what's going on. Then there was a, uh, 
what do they call what was the powder that were in the envelopes oh the anthrax anthrax then a couple of weeks later the anthrax so or a couple of months so everybody finally went back to work down there and then they had anthrax and we got stuck in our office because they thought there was anthrax and i was like that's it like <laughs> this just isn't worth it this is i need to get the fuck out of here mm -hmm. and uh basically just yeah took off traveled a little bit yada 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 ended up in shanghai um every a lot of my friends moved to asia in china and i just, just i got an opportunity if i could place a clothing order in a factory i could get this order and start this business found the factory in thailand everyone spoke english there it was easy for me to set up an office there and just became this clothing manufacturing business um then started ice cream shops there shout out emac and bolios um <laughs> my favorite ice cream from america i was stoned one day in thailand and i was like i just gotten back from america and i was like dude there's no good ice cream here so i sent them an e email it was like what we were saying like your best conversations or the first smoke of the day yeah. it was that first smoke dude <laughs> that's exactly. what it was it's it was the a, first it's not smoke. a lie no i was it's feeling like true. chatty as hell i was stolen i was like all oh, i need is some really good ice cream and i've got a cheeseburger in paradise and so i sent them a message i was like just fedex me some put dry ice send me the bill i don't care how much it costs they were like no nah, we can't do that i was like okay i'm i'll open a franchise send me all the ice cream and they were like if you could figure it out go for it ended up taking us two years to figure out because importing ice cream is so difficult in thailand and uh, once we opened it, it went viral. It was the first time Instagram was a big thing. And every single picture on Instagram were these giant ice cream cones with like six scoops on them. And Damn, uh, that's it, cool. It was man. on BuzzFeed in America. It was just, you know, it wasn't, I'd like to be like, yeah, I'm a marketing genius, but it, it was just something that happened. Amazing luck. And um, there was a line down the block for a year to buy these $30 huge ice cream cones because everybody just wanted to take a picture of it. So that was really fun. We opened seven shops. We had 45 staff and moved back to New York, basically. Wow, that's fire. And the whole time, just like really for me, I'm just like focusing on my like grow. And I've got like one room in a house. I had a house at this point, but it's right in the middle of the city. Nobody's even thinking about weed there. Thailand people, all they, they, most people there don't even know what it smells like at this point. Yeah. So, and nobody's thinking about indoor grow. So like, I wasn't even that nervous about growing inside because it's not even something that people there could comprehend. You could go and buy air filters and pumps and. Yeah. I was going to say, how'd you get your supplies? I imported a ton of stuff from England, uh, esoteric hydroponics, <laughs> uh, a lot of stuff from Australia and then a lot of stuff from America, like just all the different online shops would be like yo will you ship to me to thailand i'll you figure out the shipping i'll pay you whatever it is and brought in like three by three botanic hair trays huge cost crazy amounts wow. of money to bring those in but i didn't care because i just needed to have my weed you know so that was really fun i had amazing seeds i was growing a lot of og rascal stuff like that was the Damn. white bubba from og rascals my favorite ever OG Rascal never replies to my messages on Instagram. Feel free to message me now. <laughs> <laughs> white Bubba. Shout out to the OG, man. Yeah. For sure. Love the White Bubba. The White Bubba, I think, is even better than the Wi-Fi. Seriously, man. That White Bubba, I don't know if anyone's even... I haven't heard anybody growing it or seen anybody when, growing it. When you're smoking out there, how are you... I'm only smoking at home. Are you putting... <laughs> what, what was your, like, precaution? Like you don't really care or is just like I'm, I'm at home it's no worries like at home you can smoke in my house my backyard i'm not too worried about it um i smoked like sometimes behind the ice cream shop no one's around so i'm being like subtle about it one hitters really yeah 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 but the first five years i was there i'm just smoking thai brick weed and that i've just smoking huge joints i bought the uh the, the one of those like 64 loaders i grind up like a kilo of weed because that's how it came by the kilo take wow. out the red strings take out the seeds the stems sometimes it's super dank and it's like kind of this hazy stuff that's the really good shit sometimes it's this green kind of skunky stuff from lao but a lot of time it would end up being really moldy <laughs> and that's where i was like i need to either stop smoking weed or grow my own and so i was like all right i'm growing weed in thailand did you keep it all for yourself or were you yeah i didn't like, even tell anybody about it. i could have sold it for probably about twelve thousand a pound yeah 
but I didn't want to tell one guy knew about it, helped me out with the grow sometimes. Yeah. So you had to break him off. Yeah, of course. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. That's fire as fuck. That is cool. We, uh, we want to do something in Thailand soon. That's amazing. Get everybody out there at the same time. Yeah. An event. Back then people didn't, people, they didn't know the difference between Taiwan and Thailand. I'd be like, I live in Thailand. They'd be like, oh, you speak Taiwanese? all the time and now wow everybody knows about thailand so it's awesome it's an amazing country great people obviously amazing food and i think this is probably the best thing that could have happened for for the country for tourism so i think this is going to help a lot covid was devastating to them so definitely everybody get out to thailand and support it's basically the amsterdam of asia right now and i love it fire i can't wait to go yeah you're gonna have a great time you got to come. For sure. I'm down. Hell yeah. We'll keep talking about that. I talked to Josh too. Josh Smith, new terror. That's like kind of That's, our yeah. bond is yeah. like. Did you? Got, yeah, you got, I guess. He'd been to the ice cream shop when he was in Thailand, oh, no but we didn't know each other. We didn't talk yeah. to each other really. Like, I don't think I was at the shop when he came in and he was so busy doing his coffee stuff. Um, but then when I came back, I talked, <laughs> I signed up at Equinox and the girl at Equinox is like, oh, my boyfriend and his friend are starting this weed company called Pistol Point. You should meet them. And he just came back from Thailand too. And we were, I was like, wow, oh, crazy. Damn. Yeah. What a small time world. to go and a time to come back. Yep. And seemingly. And New York, like, thank gosh, I'm here for New York because this is really the dream. Everyone's like, why don't you go back to Thailand? But New York, I mean, this is, this yeah, this is, is just a moment. Dream. Like you said, a moment in yeah. time. It's really special. It. So yeah, it's, it's modern day prohibition. It doesn't seem like it because you're in it, but it's modern day prohibition of cannabis. Is yep. he, we're in it, you yep. know, right now. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, <clears throat> about to be out of it. Hopefully, been it's waiting. interesting. I'm not gonna lie, I've been waiting. <laughs> Yeah, I, I remember in like 2002, we're thinking like five years in like five years, it should be legal. Then my buddy put me on something. He's like, think about it in presidencies, not in years. Right. He's like, because it's going to have to pass during someone's presidency. A lot of that will have to be who's voted in what cabinet and all that. And that kind of put it in perspective where I was like, damn, it seems further out now. Yeah, because like I'm thinking this next one, then not maybe the next one, you know, so it's interesting the whole time. Are you waiting to come back to New York? Are you like excited about to come back or are you just kind of like that's the next step? Yeah, I was burnt out. I was just burnt out on doing business there and living there. So I was definitely the way I felt when I was left New York 15 years before that. I was like, I'm ready to get the hell out of here. Um Next chapter. Next chapter. Yeah. yeah. So I was excited to come back to New York and I, I'm still feeling excited to be in New York because and that's great because when I left to go to Thailand, I was so down on it. So, and I'm from New York. I was born here. I grew up here. So it's great to be here and feel positive about it. Yeah. Best New York strain that you, that's lost. I mean, that we sour. know, come on. Yeah. Yeah. You don't even have to. You know that's what it. you're asking. Sour diesel. Sour, sour diesel is what the most What you mean, man? I, a lot of people still got the real sour, bro. Everybody it's still sour. got the real sour. They've said, no, it's, it's, it's real. The real sour. what they've been telling We know I know people that have had the cut for 25, 30 years. It ain't the same. It's but just, it's just the terps have been lost. I mean, tissue culture, it seems, I don't know, I'm not a huge, but from what I've seen, it seems like tissue culture doesn't really bring back terps. You know, I it agree. seems like no, it, I agree. It, it, totally. Do yeah. you think that we remember it different than it used to be? No, no, no slightly. Way. No, slightly. no, no, no. Because I'd get a 20 sack and you couldn't bring it in. Like you had to put it in two bags. Like yeah. people would smell it. it. Did, like you couldn't it bring it to the store. Yeah. Like it was so smelly. I think too like, many options right now for yeah, growers. It just it's, led us down to a bunch of watered down shit. You mean options on like how to grow or yeah. Options? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Too many techniques, too many new, too many additives, too many this, that, that. Like back in the days, it was just like, your weed was either like fire or not fire. Now it's like, ah, it could be, you know, midi. Yeah. <laughs> Birth of the mids, you there, know. There's a lot of midi. A lot of midi. A I mean, indoor midi. was also all like kind of craft. The words. And, exactly. That's, you know, I think so, that's more of yeah. the scale ex as well. Like if you had a hundred lighter, that was like, whoa, damn. Yeah. Now it's like, they're like, I got 5,000 like facilities going like. It's a lot of shit. You had a hundred lighter back then. You're risking thirty to forty years. It was huge. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm saying, yeah. like twelve lights was big. Yes, seriously, like was yeah. huge. Like all the guys who were growing this, nobody had hundred lights, fifty lights. I don't, you know, maybe one or two people in the city had like forty lights. I think, but it was more like spots. Like I knew guys that had twelve lights there, eight lights there. Yeah. 
six lights at the homie spot and we split right. that then we got a 12 the guys that had like they were like yeah i got like three four spots going right now you'd be like <laughs> damn dude yeah you know yeah Only it was interesting it. and this hour was originally it was like there were just like six or seven people everybody those were the only people that had that cut you know so that was definitely definitely it and then there were different stages where it leaked out got stolen whatever and so who even knows 90 percent of what we have now is res seeds or the rat seeds and uh the structure looks different even on a lot of it i get i went back in the forums a couple of last week just to go back and look at what people were talking about this hour and like i just was reading through like 2012 and they're all talking about taking it 86 days too and things like that um i remember it going on like people taking it 60 something so i don't really remember that many people taking it that long but when i went back and read it there were a bunch of people taking it that long yeah we we took it like 68 days when we were when we had a allegedly when we had some some sour going i mean that's completely ruined weed too this whole like 65 everyone 65 day cycle thing man like we're just picking a day period yeah i mean just grow, grow weed. it till it's it's ready to be harvested yeah or don't grow it people say to us all the time that they'll grow whatever we want and i'm like i want this this and this and they're like ah, i can't it takes 70 days if you're worried about it's days you're worried about the wrong thing <laughs> yeah it's not days, yielder, should, man. days should be one of the last things on your list as a grower you're worried about i'm not you know all the big cultivators be like yeah but how do you grow something to make money it's i get it it could be hundreds of thousands of dollars that that's costing you that's the problem that, as a this is the issue but as a dealing. consumer i don't give a fuck you'll pay for yeah. it I just think give me the best weed that's your problem don't try and charge me top price for weed that you know yourself isn't even where it's supposed to be but that 90 to 120 day let's say if someone wants to play devil's advocate right grown really really well and it's a special strain i know what you're gonna say you're still gonna get every dollar that you set out to get and like it's yield, a labor of love and yield to like those things are huge yields. yeah, yeah those and things those hazes even a lot of those bust out all right guys so if you didn't know already everybody's switching the drip the terps are a big deal on today's bags and things have got to have a good nose but they've also got to taste good in the joint or your preferred way of smoking so if you didn't know already everybody's switching a drip and if you want to switch the drip then reach out to us family at firstsmokeoftheday.com send us an email let us know i want to feed my fire i want to try drip we're dripped out we're right here our favorite place to go you know where the pros go to grow at grow generation over 60 stores nationwide either in store or online use our code first smoke 10 family get online if you're shopping for grow goods first smoke 10 or in store anywhere in the u.s tell them the first smoke family sent you we'll see you there feeling like a champ yo first smoke family if you haven't already go to moodtrays.com the most exclusive site to get all your custom branded gear done for your brand low minimums and quick turnarounds you're going to want to use the code fsotd tell them the first smoke family sent you so where we get all our stuff done so look you want to get your brand popping you want to get going go right now moodtrays.com use the code fsotd one of the things yeah. i was hoping we could get to the bottom of this interview is who brought the haze to New York? <laughs> the Piff. The to Piff. New York? How do you think it originally landed? Oh, that was, uh, so, it's a weed, is a, weed has been moving around by as the laws and as people crack down on weed, it's had to move around the world. So, right, so it was grown in California. This, I think, this is my guess, there were smugglers who were bringing in a ton of weed mostly through the west coast they collected a ton of seeds and realized at some point instead of because a lot of these guys were plain guys with weights and stuff so that one point they figured take out all the seeds just fly the bud without the seeds then they had piles of seeds they knew which bud was good they figured out they could grow indoors someone figured that out on the west coast uh started popping those seeds on the west coast they started getting cracked down on in the west coast hard and like you know those operations in the eighties and stuff. So those guys get cracked down on, they run away and take the seeds and the genetics to Amsterdam because it's legal in Amsterdam. They can like get a little respite over there. So everything blossoms in Amsterdam. Um, then 215 stuff comes in California and California's 
Meanwhile, they've been growing in Switzerland a little bit. Switzerland gets cracked down on. 215 opens up California again. All of a sudden, that's the best place in the world to grow. There's no place you can do pheno hunts like you could in Cali. No place you could do, you know, these big breeding projects. So it moves to Cali and then comes back to New York eventually, hopefully. So the Hayes started in Santa Cruz, I believe, by the Hayes brothers. This is in the 70s. These guys are crossing like South American and Asian sativas and they're coming out with crazy things like blueberry terps. Like, you know, to us, we just think of these things. We just probably thinking like haze jack terps right away in our head. Right. As soon as I'm saying like Santa Marta gold and everything land race, we're just thinking all the. But somehow when you cross those together, they came out with things like the haze, the blueberry, strawberries, all these different flavors. And uh, these Hayes brother guys got really famous for it. They brought it to Amsterdam. Dutch people loved it, went ham for it. Set up this whole system, right, I believe, where you get paid for how many days it takes to go. The longer the days, the more you get paid for it, too. Wow. Um, so it worked out great. And then they start winning cannabis cups with it in Amsterdam and everybody's reading high times and seeing this NL five haze is winning all these prizes. So everybody wants what's the number one, you know, winner in the cannabis cup. So guys go out there, they take these quick trips, just like a day or two flying out there, grabbing seeds, hiding them in like every way they can think of. They're super nervous about bringing seeds back. It's, serious if they get caught with these seeds they're not just getting the seeds taken away they're going to jail so they're like crazy paranoid like seams of suitcases jackets cd cases oh, i don't know if they had cds might have been tape cases mm -hmm. bringing them back and popping them here and a lot of these some of these guys in florida are popping them they're contractors they're builders they've got houses are cheap to build their properties super cheap and they're figuring out growing indoors and they're figuring out this NL5 hazes are coming out like fire and they've got all their people growing them in different houses, but they're nervous because these guys are super paranoid guys. They're very careful. They're serious and they don't want to be selling the weed right where they're living. It's just too hot for them. Somehow they figure out, they get connected with some people in New York City and the pipeline just starts going and that's it. And we thought we're like the piff is ours we didn't realize it was coming from florida until pretty recently some people you know the people who were selling it knew but like the people who were just buying it we didn't know as far as i was imagining these grows in uptown do you remember the rumors about it yeah i used to think there's a big grow in the bronx somewhere they buried <laughs> it underground for with different drugs then that's what made it that hazy taste it was like sprayed with this sprayed with that it was like oh we want that uptown because it's sprayed with all the none of the shit was just great great haze and ab about all of this just one caveat i may be wrong yeah, yeah. dude but you're the <laughs> first person to give us a legitimate <laughs> background lead up to the haze the haze brothers Mul i guess we got to look into that multiple levels <laughs> of your story completely not not to say that but they check out because the old the old ogs that i came up with the first thing they would do is be like now don't sell this to anyone around us like around the area like get this that was like a huge and i would always be like who gives a fuck like but i get it now it's like they used to come to me and be like you're heating up the area and i'm like in my head i'm thinking like who knows who right but I, that's yeah. checks out with like that that was a big thing on a lot of the guys older guys mind same thing with the Florida grows and being connected with family too. New York to Florida is like a lot of people retire from Jersey and New York straight down to Florida. So you have family in both places. My cousins are here. My brother yeah. lives up there. It, it's an easy connection to make. People that come vacation, yeah. all that. We grew up in Florida. So when people mm -hmm. ask me about haze or sour, I'm like, yeah, I had the the both. real haze, the real yeah. sour. A lot of amazing things. It was a things lot, of, was a lot Florida, of Cuban dude. growers. Crazy. Cuban it's growers. Cuban, mostly, I mean, yeah, yeah, man, they ends. really ran the scene. Yep. And even my Mexican homies learned from Cuban yep. people. So it was like. And a lot of them would make these deals where they'd get the cut for two years. They'd have to grow it for two years. Yeah. Everything they grew would have to go back to that person. But then after two years, they could kind of start on their own. So the cut definitely got out there. Like, you know, and it, the real cut was around, but a few different people went out to Amsterdam, got the seeds at the same time. So like I've met two or three people who legitimately feel like they were the first one to bring 
and the seeds here it's all around the same years that they tell all, us because that's what was winning in high times everybody was reading high times everyone was going to sensi seed bank and getting and 90 percent of them was nl5 haze you know some of these things might be you know people talk about the different the brown the green maybe somebody got some silver pearl in there some silver haze i used to think it was silver haze until i met all these guys from from florida who went out and they're the ones who told me not nah, it's nl5 haze it's crazy how so many origins if not you know 90 plus percent all go back to amsterdam genetics the early dutch genetics spawned all over the world but again those projects. were those cali genetics yeah. that were on the run right because and brought to amsterdam as a, as a refuge dna you know? yeah. all the guys that were from california originally and had to flee for the skunk many the skunk reasons came from california mm -hmm. that's what and amsterdam was you know when i first started going there that was everything was skunk first it was skunk number one and then a couple of years later the super skunk which was so heavy dude i mean that stuff i'd get off the plane smoke it and then just couldn't even talk for <laughs> hours when i bring up super skunk to people they'll be like oh yeah the skunk one and i'm like nah we grew the super skunk and the skunk 44 and i some of the best weed to this day that i've ever it's it's what skunk super skunk i would consider like what we used to see is surfer crippy yep lime I've, green stick so to the back another lost turp it's yeah. afghanistan where's that skunk turp it's gone yeah people, just, gone. people come yeah. up and give me weed yeah. and say it is i got the skunk and i've yet to see same with sour it's, you break open the sour nuggies to really smell it you get like a hint of uh, of 2000 and it you know like 20 years ago yeah it, uh, you don't get a it it's your shake in a bag smoked some sour that had some skunk in it um where you could smell the skunk i smoked it in my friend courtney's basement sorry courtney and uh like an hour later everybody in the house thought there was a skunk we all had to leave walk around the perimeter to try and find the skunk how long ago this is about six years ago you're like walking them around it's like that friend who like steals your wallet yeah. and helps you try to find yeah. it <laughs> you're like yeah i don't know it's I weird that's where i think skunk it's a skunk from. but i don't know where it must have gone it's crazy when you talk about old genetics too because flashing back 20 year career some of the the most beautiful tasting weed i've ever had was thai yeah. it was a thai weed that was it looked like moldy purple weed and it almost had a silver purple yeah. to it but yeah. then when we started breaking it up and smoking it everyone called it the tutti frutti because it was like mind-bendingly strong and tasted like fruit terps but not like like good fruit terps like that's amazing like again that's where that probably that's probably related to that blueberry mm -hmm. i've had a uh, haze s1 that came out totally orange so it's um, just how these so to get back to these old strains man everybody please get back to the ties and the land races and let's start crossing those things back together to get these fruity terps that are popular that can come out of those strains and the afghanis and that stuff afghanis shout out to the afghanis that's really the game changer there that's the super skunk is when they brought the afghani into the skunk and again chem og all these things go back to some valley in afghanistan that's got the dankest weed ever mm -hmm. yeah it, I, it, that makes me think we need more collaboration between dutch and growers in the u.s and other places as far as they have the seeds from all this that original stuff they have that saved they have so much stuff saved <laughs> now they need to rehunt a lot of that down because things are getting watered down we see it a, a lot they were these watered days. down in the late 90s honestly a lot of those sensi seeds were not great like everybody was so hyped about the the mr nice remember that mm -hmm. g13 hp cross yep there was like i don't know there was maybe one good cut of that that ever came out of that yeah man it just that just shows you it really does it's different wow how you, how you smoking over there good let's get let's get uh we'll jump back more into your story man how'd you get tied in with the uh, guys from a life uh dice the god dice nice. uh used to work at prohibit or something and mm -hmm. we used to hang out and uh he moved over to a life and chris vidal who used to be a flight club and i was selling sneakers since the day flight club opened um or like the week flight club opened and that's what it actually used to send me back and forth to amsterdam 
I'd buy and sell sneakers and I'd go out to Amsterdam and even if I could get 10 pairs and it was enough to pay for the trip for the weekend and I could smoke, I'd go for the weekend and come back. And, uh, yeah, it was a great time going out to Amsterdam and meeting all those, like that's, that's what got me plugged in with everybody. I used to just go bring, uh, chocolate, hash chocolates back. And then when chocolate closed, I used to make my own like chocolates. Like I'd rent an Airbnb, like, well, it wasn't Airbnb then, but from Bob's youth hostel, I'd bar into a, a private apartment. Shout out on, Bob's youth hostel. Unlike on, on Spalstrat right across from chocolate. Then that place, uh, chocolate closed, but I used to make the chocolates, bring them back, give it all the sneaker, the people in the stores. So I'd get the shoes and shit. And, you know, then Chris went from flight club over to a life and, I, I met Bamboo at uh, one of the first A Life co backyard concerts, and uh, he was just smoking weed, and you know, smelled that, and that's what brought it all together. And then just kept on the hunt for weed, you know. Um, I never stopped, and then like you know, I was watching the changing tide, and you know, I thought a CBD shop would like lead to where I thought New York would be, like. Literally, New York has given every CBD processor, every CBD grower. They've all gotten licenses. The only people who didn't get it were the CBD stores. So, I mean, I left that like really quick. Honestly, like didn't really feel it. You know, I tried to get into it because I thought it would be like a quick segue, but it definitely like CBD was never really something I could stand behind. Um, and then we, I started going to Happy Monkey from all that. I met, I started going to Normal. Um, I well, there was a big event in the city, and I met the guys from Normal. I met Ben and stuff, and then I ended up going to Happy Monkey, which was like they showed us the way. That was the club that really like they opened it up for everybody. Vlad and Ramon, like they set it off and showed us what could be done. And I mean, it was it was incredible to see it. And you know, when they closed, like we were able to you know open we i mean their space was incredible like you know our own slant of like our living room like you know what i'm saying this is like our apartment you know like i don't know how we get what we get here you know what i'm saying i don't know how the people like you know some of the the illest people in the world would like come in here you know and, and feel comfortable to chill here and sit on a broken couch and watch tv like i i mean i've had the biggest rappers in the world <laughs> in the back watching 20 inch like old 720p televisions to watch wrestling in the back like sitting on a folding chair just so they could like chill in the back and watch wrestling and smoke weed so it's uh it's been fun you know it's creating an experience mm -hmm. it's somewhere where you can enjoy some some of the best and not be bothered yeah that's like the key to it and it's like i'm i'm excited we've talked about this for a long time but you guys know going to amsterdam it's the one thing we lack here in the states the coffee shop experience it's so you know crazy. getting some hot tea <laughs> having you know a coca-cola whatever you want to do right and you're just chilling enjoying and then you could go next door and do the same thing get a totally different experience at a different coffee shop which is just like a magical thing to be able to go somewhere and do that unbothered. No one's like, you know, no facial expressions, no like. It's oh, also the way we we've always gotten weed. Like the way you've always gotten weed is you go to someone's house, you smoke some weed, then you get the weed, and yeah. maybe you smoke a little more weed and then you go. So the whole idea of like the one place that you can't smoke weed is the place where you're buying it. I, I think Kills that was kind experience. of the devil's bargain that you guys had to made, make in 215, but it was like, it's really crazy to me. <laughs> like for me, that would be, I'd, I'd be smoking. I guess you couldn't, you could, but I, for me, I'd be smoking in there no matter what. I'd be like, everyone's smoking here no matter what. It blows my mind. So for us, we're just doing what always came natural to us. Like you're always getting weed and smoking weed in the same place. You're always able to... And the great thing is being comfortable, like you said. That yeah, this I'm is bothered. the one place like, at home. You've got your head out the window. On the street, yeah. you've got you know you're looking both ways for somebody, yep. the cops or something. So there's very few places where you can really relax and just. And Amsterdam was like that. I used to love going there because you just get that like relax. You could just smoke without looking over your shoulder. It's the epicenter of that. It's the epicenter of like you say experiences and being able to socialize and also like 
you say not be bothered or want to be bothered, right? You've been home or you're working all day and you have a home type of job or you be, you have something that segregates you from people and you're like, man, I'd like to just be around some people and smoke some weed and have some like it's it's the one aspect we're missing that connects everything in cannabis right now for people who like us that i don't know for people who don't drink and who just smoke you know we're missing that third place everyone else has goes out to the bar and meets right but for me i hate that i hate going to a bar and being around drunk people you know so this is our third place and for those of us who don't drink and who do smoke it's, you know, people feel such a relief when they come here for the first time. They're so genuinely happy and I get it. It makes me feel great, but I get it. It's like, yeah, you can look, like you said, you know, there's always going to be someone in here you could nerd out on weed with, you know, there's always going to be someone cool. You could talk about music and culture with, and you know that everyone's going to be all right with you smoking a fat blunt while you're talking about it. Yeah. Straight up. Yeah. You just <laughs> fucking relax, especially in the city. Yeah. it's tough i mean even just to be able to come come in here and have you know everybody's a weed smoker everybody knows there's going to be weed smoked there's no issues it's a controlled environment i mean that's that's high value especially in the city you know yeah. every bar has fights we've never had a fight weed brings people together everybody mm -hmm. absolutely it does you could see that in the park yesterday yeah you walked around and it was no issues thousands of people. every type of person every age of person i mean it, it it couldn't have been more diverse it's amazing that we have to struggle for something that's so not only benign but positive mm -hmm. right like i was someone was telling me about the tetra lounge in colorado that it's this like super mellow place they don't sell anything it's just a place to just smoke weed everyone there's chill nice cool quiet and the city keeps on trying to shut them down and it's like for a while, these people are doing nothing to anybody just being good neighbors and that's it so us as weed smokers we have this like amazing community of kind people who don't fight don't cause trouble the only problem we have is we may be like make a big line for the munchies right you know that's the biggest problem you're gonna have with us yeah or um, smell and that's easily solved you know yeah that just costs money yeah. give, give us the avenue we'll figure it out life is full of all different smells some of them people like some of them people hate i love dorian a lot of people hate the smell of dorian like <laughs> i don't know new york city smells like garbage sometimes you know that's smells like sometimes yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean <laughs> or worse yeah sometimes yeah, yeah. but <sighs> that's life like you're not necessarily entitled to like fresh air every or to like sweet smelling air everywhere you are you got to be like flexible when you're out in public and yeah. you know some people are always looking for something to complain about yeah no i mean it's it's cool to see where it's happening how do you guys feel like for the next phases in new york city as far as like what's going to happen with all these spots that have popped up and you know lounges and we see more things rolling out now how do you think it's going to go you know it, look there's I think there's a, a long road ahead. Um, I think the the state, you know, has said that they were going to do certain things that we're hoping that, you know, they're going to come through with and, you know, we're going to be following every step along the way and, and hope to, you know, be like up and running and every with everybody else. But um, I think it's a long road. I think they, they got to figure out a lot of different things and, and figure out a way to get you know a lot of people popped up you know in the last couple of years like even in the last we, year since we, we were here we've been here before legalization mm -hmm. you know like we've never been, had a chance to apply yet like now they're they're giving out applications and and we're just waiting for our chance and hopefully you know everything will work in uh our you know in the right way we'll see yeah. i've been going to albany for eight years or something like I said, was on the board of directors of Normal uh, in the state, started the chapter in New York City. There was no New York City chapter before, so I helped get that started, helped get the chapter started uh, upstate in Woodstock. Um, and I've really been, you know, passionate about this. Shout out to Doug Green, who Sorry. probably is one of the most instrumental people uh, behind the scenes in getting New York such an amazingly good bill. You know, you're allowed to have five pounds in your house and you're allowed to walk around with two and a half, I think or two or four. three ounces or something, something like that. That was, that's directly a result of 
Doug Green's input. He tragically passed away, but really sad. He can't be here to see this. Mm-hmm. Um, but so, you know, I was definitely like part of all that stuff before legalization happened and have seen the development. It's different, the way the bills have changed, the fights and struggles, the good luck that we've had to get here. Like, you know, the governor of our state had all these problems <laughs> and, um, you know, it's a lot basically legalization happened because of women in New York state and uh but it's still a long road ahead it's still got more time they're still figuring it out and we're just you know waiting for our turn like obviously we want er to do everything with proper paperwork but um we're going to be patient wait for the right opportunity and just like keep our head down stay in our lane till then if I first thing I do, if I got a license, the amount of network you have, and I mean the the people who want to be around the atmosphere you guys create, I mean it, it's a shoe in to have your own license in New York. Even for someone that has a license, my first call would be you guys. Hey, I have something. I got a deal for you. I yeah. mean, it's it's like come on. Well, we're looking. We're out yeah. there. You know, we, oh. we'd like to you know be on the right side of things and make everything work. And, you know, we're looking all around, you know, we'd like to see uh, this, seeing this last year and seeing Spanibus, this is an international community and like Astor Club should be like, we, we want to have a home across the world, you know, from, from California, like everywhere. So we'll see where things take us. I fuck with that. Yeah. We need consumption lounges in the U.S. And it's not us. It's the plan. Again, supposedly uh, Vegas is online. So I'm curious Vegas is about to start. Come yeah. about that. Yep. What's going to come of it and how it's going to be. Is it going to be a comfortable experience or is it going to be a, a custy experience? I'm hoping it's a comfortable one, you know, and it's stop, a big part of it. Yeah. You know, you come in a place, you start getting, you know, mm-hmm. you got to buy their stuff. You got to smoke. <laughs> then you got to smoke like start getting forced into shit. It's like, nah, it's not the same. I think it's hard once it gets up to a certain scale when you've got like guys putting, you know, I don't know, $50 million yeah, into building big, their lounge. It's never going to work. Once you have 50 million, you have to have people running it. The people you have to hire responsible people. You're hiring a lot of people who are probably not part of this culture at all, have no idea. And yeah, it's going to be McDonald's, Custy, whack shit. Like, but hopefully someone some will figure tea, out, yeah. like, people who have heart who are in it for the right reasons, like us, like, you know, just because there's nothing else we can do. This is who we are. Like, that's it. And we yeah. need federal legalization. We need to be able to have, like, this community that comes around. Like, you know, it's important for everybody. We need international legalization. Like, it's not fair that, you know, we're all separated like this. Like, mm-hmm. let's, let's, we love good weed. I mean, seeing all these New York growers, there's, there's opportunities for everybody. And we need to make sure that all these opportunities come, come around for everyone. Yeah. It should be same as, uh, like if alcohol, right? It's only a few places on the planet where alcohol is outlawed or, or completely banned <laughs> and they voted on it. Other than that, it's, it should be like tomatoes, really, man. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, it shouldn't even, like, even alcohol is, like, kind of nutty. Like, yeah, you should be able to grow it and sell it. It's a plant. You want to grow it? You want to sell it? Go for it. Pay your tax. See you later. And give so, a reasonable tax. There's I mean, nothing. The tax like, is are we crazy. Controlling? Are we yeah. controlling people like, being positive, You're- kind, loving, uh, relaxed, mellow, hungry? What part of that is uh, something that needs to be in its own category of regulation? No, they want you to pay your dues. They want you to pay up for all the all the shit, you know, from previous. That's what they they, want. Yeah, that's what they want. But let's not give it to them. Yeah, Fuck what they want. Yeah. If they change taxes and they like gave licenses, we we there would be no illicit market and yeah. they would have way more money. They would, they would yeah. get rid of the illicit market. Like you tax it like liquor. Look, that's a little high even, but you tax it like liquor and you gave out licenses. Nobody would be, yeah, there be, game be no over. illicit It'd market. Be game over. Yeah, there's no, yeah. there's not a lot of illicit. Lot of and then allow moonshining. shipping and shit. And yeah, whatever yeah, it is. If the rules make sense, then everyone will do it. Yeah. It's just, they're the middleman. It'll be an open market at that a, point. Which yeah. well, I think it, we've I think it this deserves paradigm to be. Where we're saying like, okay, let's work out fair regulations. I was too, man. That when I was doing the normal stuff, I was fighting for legalization and regulations. I kind of feel like I was a little brainwashed and it's like, I come out of the matrix now and it's like, no, let's not talk about like how to fit their rules into our society, our culture. 
you know, we're not doing anything wrong. There's no reason we have to have special regulations different than selling books. We've yeah. all accepted that, that like, oh yeah, we need special regulate. We don't. Why yeah. should we have special regulations for this shit? I, I agree. Yeah. It's, like, it's almost like so, your mentality is like, well, can I just get a little? Yeah. That's kind of yeah, what you're nah, fuck yeah. the whole paradigm, dude. Change everything. Like, let's just let people test it to make sure it's safe, mm -hmm. pay the tax, and let's go. And that's it. And eventually we'll get there. We're going to be there in like 15, 20 years, I believe. But I don't know. Yeah, that tax structure is like the middleman that wants a thousand dollars on every unit. You're like, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah it's not going to work. Long term, it's not going to work. Yeah. New York has crazy taxes right now yeah. with the potency and stuff. It's, it's, I mean, the quality you're getting is, is mixed right now. Um, and it's 40% on the better stuff or something like that. It's wild. And you can't even, can, the testing that they're trying to apply the law to, you can't go by that. Not right yeah. now. There's like the testing centers, the stuff that's going on in the back is just wow. Are they still not testing for mold at all or any of that? Some stuff? places are, some aren't. Some yeah. are pesticide testing. Some aren't testing for some pesticides. Some are, it's just like what you say. It's all over the place. And then some, some testing facilities, you know, when you see like 46% THC, you know, you're like, come on. And then you find out a year later that like, yeah, that guy will give you whatever number you want. You know, it's like, come on. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's wacky. I, I agree, man. It's like they definitely have to figure out a better system. And it starts with us coming together and having these conversations in a place like this. Right. It really does. Yeah. You guys bring heads of the culture together behind the scenes. When we started, when we started talking, I mean, there was different brands. There's people behind there. It's like yeah. every time we come around Astro Club or you guys throw an event, I see guys that are the the heads of the industry from all over the world in the same place there's very few people that can bring that together you know we got very lucky you know like jolly roger and puff gone introduced us to a lot of people very early on through uh hope lord and talking terps and like ben uh ben had some crazy ideas early on and we rented a giant mansion when we had not a dollar spent every last cent on it and had every brand over i think you guys came to the house even i think that was the beginning of really introducing us to everybody and and it worked out shit absolutely you guys got to keep the flame flame lit out here it's yeah. been what keep we've been pumping. doing our, like he was talking about bob's youth hostel i used to stay in bob's youth hostel too in the like act the bunk beds yeah. and i i stayed there one summer for like two and a half months or something, but every single morning they'd kick everybody out of the beds because they want to clean up the rooms at like nine or 10 in the morning, pretty early, probably earlier, like eight in the morning. Everyone would have to come downstairs. They gave you uh, free eggs, untoasted white bread and tea or coffee. And I'd set up at the same table every single day. I'd sit there until like four o'clock in the afternoon and people and because i was there every day for two months i got to know all the other like heavy smoker stoners and whether they were staying at bob's or other places everybody would come and meet in the basement at bob's at that table you could leave your stuff there for an hour and go because there'd always be somebody at that table a lot of times me and it was like a mini astro club so it's like did that in high school did that he did that in a life like this is just what we've been doing our entire life and it's not you know it's uh, it's the plant working through us. It's us. It's the, we're the plant. It's it's everything though. It's just, but it's just it's a quest for good weed. Yeah, man. It's just, it's just looking a quest for the for best, the best weed. weed. I know, man. You get. I said you got like a like a hand roll or something. You hook me up with this hash hole, which is crazy. Zushi with Helios rosin yep. Z cube. Yeah, you can't find like you can't. You know what I mean? If I wanted to go grab one of those real quick, where am I going to go? We look for the best of the best you know wherever saying? it is. So, and it's just like that's what the city is nyc like the best is going to find its way here yep. you know kind of similar to where la it's like the best will find its way to la the market just demands it people will pay for it people appreciate it there's like so many people in these places that it's like that's probably where it'll go first you know that's probably your better shot of finding it big been city paying crazy numbers for the best weeds like the 90s you know the sour that used to go for like 600 all the way up and you'd be like thank you may i have another yeah <laughs> and it's worth it point sevens yeah and, and now the candy wave yep do you think the candy wave is in its crest is it forming is it are we passing through it 
where are we with candy right now? I mean, people always like sweet things, whether it was candy or fruit or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, people, I remember people trying to add like, you know, that's why that sugar and molasses adding that to get the bricks numbers up. That was, <laughs> so people are always going for sweet stuff. I don't think the candy is going to be gone anytime soon, but for us and a lot of people we know, we're definitely on like way more of a gas. We've always been gas guys. I mean, we, we have our candies we love. I love Skittles. Skittles changed everything for me. The first time I smoked Skittles a few, you know, which was pretty recently for me, the first time I smoked Skittles was only like maybe three or four years ago. Mm -hmm. But what the first time I smoked real Skittles, I was just like, I don't know what this is. I want more, all of it. Fire. I don't care what the price is. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Indoor batches, good indoor batches of Z or like, that's my that's my go to. Nothing beats blue smoke zushi that all day. Yeah, I can smoke blue zushi all day long, and I don't even like candy. That's the only you know, a Z every once in a while. I need more gas. I need something heavier. But blue zushi just smokes. And yep. all those spawn from Skittles, so it's like all the praise still goes to the OGs of Skittles. It's like no matter what we're talking about, rainbow belts. No matter what we're talking about blue zushi, yellow zushi. I mean, all the badass Skittles, Zitos. Yep. Like so many great strains came from that genetic, Rainbow right? Belts, Ra yeah. Moonbo. Moonbo, another one, right? Yep. And it's like all that though, it's like the peak of the mountain is like, yeah, the OGs who who brought Skittles to the table, you know, and that'll never be forgotten. And like sometimes people get up worked up like, oh, well, you know, blue zushi, that's not my this or this isn't that, right? And it's like it it's all goes back to the lineage of like we pray we're thankful for getting this amazing strain. And then everyone did their spin on it. Yeah. You know, their breeding, their seeds, their cross, their popping of whatever, right? And it's like I think that's what the whole weed industry is about. I think that's some of the best part. You, know, you get to see everyone's take on it. I could talk about Skittles for hours. And, oh. First time any anywhere I go, there's weed guys. I'm, so what do you think Skittles is? And that's it. And you could just be, you know, two hours. <laughs> and we love Fields and all the Tarpogs dudes. And, you know, everybody just yeah. seeing it, the, uh, what they've done and what they're doing now. And they're just the way they sell genetics is insane. You know, we miss Fields on this New York trip. He, uh, Hopefully we'll see him soon. The Olympics was so crazy, amazingly I, much better than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be great, but I didn't know we were going to sell the whole place out. I didn't know we were going to have to shut the doors because it was going to hit capacity. <clears throat> I didn't know the performances were going to be so good and the crowd so happy. So that, that was legendary. That was epic. It was like TV level performances. Yeah. Yeah. Like I was, I was like, I, I kept looking back. Like, <laughs> damn that's jada kiss going in damn that's styles p going in you know it's like i wanted to stay for currency i just damn we had our event coming up and i he knew was so and, good he and killed bun, it too bun killed it yeah, bun yeah. Killed it in the beginning yeah, yep. he just put out an album today with archive uh it was pretty cool we got a few shout outs on that one archive the weed company archive the weed company that's what people people are going to glaze over that it's, that's such a cool thing to do yeah. like that's a collaboration that got put together very neat in 24 hours and the dinner we put together, we put it together in how long? A week and a half? A week? So we might spend a little, <laughs> have a little more time planning that next year. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, that would be it, yeah. I'm starting to plan now for next year. The one the year before was, was super legendary. That was so legendary, man. It I was. Had that. I felt like it was a lot of special energy in the building that night. Yeah, that was meant to be. I, I seriously had had that vision for that dinner for like a year and a half before that. I just had this vision of like kind of mafia steak dinner where everybody's smoking fat blunts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? that happened. And yeah. uh, it was crazy. And I had that space for another event. And I knew that we could use that space for something. And man, that space was so perfect. It was obviously not everybody who was there, but it was, it's a bank vault from the early 1900s, like JP Morgan bank vault with all these ancient old vault boxes. And it's like, just this crazy energy of like Wall Street, 1910, Vanderbilt, something, something cool energy. And that that right there is why everybody is like fucking with you guys so heavy. Like 
providing those ex- obviously the consistent work you guys put in day to day but those experiences of taking the time to bring everyone together you had our logo etched in the mirrors and shit like our sticker or whatever it was but it was like you had everyone hooked up yeah. like it was it was a curation we didn't yeah. tell anybody we were doing it finer we just, sorts yeah, yeah you kind of had to know yeah. or no yeah but i remember just walking down the stairs and being like oh shit and then seeing it and was like oh we're gonna all have dinner here like damn this is and the food was fire it was so yeah. good so it's, shout out to bobby vans yeah it's cool i wasn't gonna say all those it, people you know. together too like yeah. all the musicians and all the like influencers and weed culture like weed culture is hype culture like we we hype beast all that stuff and it was cool bringing that all in one, one spot yeah it was it was dope being well, not a lot of people real. can do that and yeah, that's exactly. why it's you guys and I mean, not a lot like, of people it's know. stuff that we're passionate about it's just what we really want to do for ourselves <laughs> We don't do it for the money. We didn't make any money from any of these things. <laughs> we yeah. will do it for the money because my wife needs some money, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> she insists, but eventually, but we're for now, like that's not something we ever think about for us. We're just constantly thinking about the things that we want to do for ourselves and our friends and the good people around us. That's it. That's what it's all about. Yeah. I mean, the Green Wolf guys helped us do this Olympics. Yeah, and like, I mean, they did the Green Wolf, like, man. They and buddies and, and buddies, you know, yep. the way they put up money to help us get this party going. Like, they have our mentality where we don't care about making money. We want to do something great for the culture and bring everybody together. It was, you know, from day one. That's what they. <clears> the first we sat down, they were like, "Listen, we just want to put on an amazing event for the culture. That's it." And then I was like, well, there have been all these events that have been really like exploited the local growers where these local growers feel like they're missing out that the, the industry is about to take off. They need to get into it. And then these guys come from out of state and they do these events here and people feel like they have to pay all this money, thousands and thousands of dollars and give pounds of free weed or else they're going to get passed by on this opportunity that's coming. They don't get anything out of it. And these guys were like, we're just doing this for everybody. Not only, you know, we're going to take care of the guys who give us the weed. It's not weed for free. It's not them paying us for the, we're paying them for the weed. So that was the thing where I was like, yeah, I want to be part of this for sure. That's cool. Yeah, that's, that's legendary, man. Shout out to the army, the green wolf. Yeah. yeah. That's why they've been also crushing everybody. for 15 years. Yeah yeah they're in the mix they're in the know they've yeah, been putting on brands out of that shop they you know our shops but um they've I been i mean they, they, they embraced blackleaf when we came in there and just yep. nobody really even heard of this type shit they're about quality yep yeah you know i think quality will be over everything and that won't take very much long or very much longer but um, we need new york to change some of those laws so we get some some quality we get some good growers out here it'll be everywhere it is everywhere so yeah. it's just uh getting to it taking the time to get to it you guys got any collaborations or anything coming up you you got in the works or what's what's the future like for astro club <clears throat> we always got something in the works we're uh <laughs> we'll see we'll see uh, yeah you know we're i'm really excited about a lot of growers that we've been we've been spending a lot of time just basically traveling around the country and the world just kind of looking for you know i'm dreaming of this like small grower who's got this crazy new flavor that no one's ever tried yet and you know just meeting that person and getting to try that flavor that's what i'm dreaming about and both of us are dreaming about and so we've spent a lot of time this year going around trying everybody's small batch all these people that no one knows no one's ever heard of just looking for just the best not the hype just the best and so we've got a couple of uh new growers that we're really excited about inspiration seed is one of them one of my favorite things to smoke even having uh the piatella being there right at the beginning and smoking that and having uncles and and slights and las sagradas you know piatella here around it's been cool smoking that has been uh special so if i'm coming to new york city i come to astro club right i hunt i hunt it down i come here what's the number one thing i'm doing you guys are both from new york you grew up in new york what, what do i do and what am i what's the thing i should do when i come to new york besides come to astro club i can't take days off if I take a day out, like, where would you want to go? I don't know, eat like, some pizza. Where, you know, go, yeah. go eat some pizza. Food. Yeah. <laughs> Grab some pizza, get some good food, and come smoke some weed. What's, here. Your, what's your guys' pizza spot? Ooh. Amore. 
Amore in Queens. Best pizza. You uh, with that? I, I feel like, like every New Yorker no, has a different that. spot. I'm not yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you ask 100 New Yorkers, you'll get 100 different shops. There's so <laughs> much great pizza in New York, but yeah, you know, Scars, we love Scars. Uh, we love Tafaras. I love Tafaras. Yeah. Uh, Spumoni Garden. Moneros. Moneros. Yeah. That's all. Awesome. The local guys, we That's got really good pizza right next to us. You know, we got Scars and Moneros and like, Scars has got a long line, but it's it's worth it, you know. Monero's delivers quick. Upside just opened up. That's been pretty good. We got some great burgers around too. The burger game in New York's been stepping it up a little bit. What's yeah. the best burger? Fort right. Charles. Smashed. Ooh. Oh, and smashed. Yeah. I'd say smashed. If I come to New York and I want to smoke some local New York weed, what am I asking for? Some fire. Marijuana talk just uh, yeah. won the South Olympics or yep. won uh, most gas potent. most potent. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Dope. Shout out to them, man. Yeah. Huge yeah. shout out. You got it. And, and Gotti. Gotti yeah. won. Of course. Three different yeah. trophies. Gotti. Gotti weed is, yeah. Uh, shout out to Gotti. Flowers, too. <laughs> Foods Flowers, one of the best things we got. Shout out to our boy Smoke Up, too. Yep. Smoke Up. Smoke yeah. Up's out here heavy. Uh, I love his stuff, too. Yeah. The first time I ever smoked the uh, Bubaloo yeah. was we just walked past him one day. We were walking back to the shop. And he was sitting down on the street and I like walked past him smoking a blunt and I was like, wait a minute. I know that guy. I couldn't even, I didn't even know, couldn't remember his name. <laughs> I just seen him somewhere and I was like, yo, we're, and he was like, here, try this. This is the new Bubaloo. And that shit was fire. Yeah. He was on FaceTime saying no one smokes like yeah. the gang. Yeah. And yeah, after yeah. that day, we well, see homie. smoke everywhere. Yeah. And then we've, yeah. see him everywhere East West. He's, yeah. yeah legend he's out here legend yeah yeah new york's a great here. place man yeah. great like legendary people i can't wait to see the culture arise you know yeah. like really arise it's dope getting to know all the different new york players and yeah. brands and growers and just people that are like in the mix for pushing sure. for sure you know and claiming like this is where i'm from this is where i'm gonna be this is where i'm gonna keep it yep keep we don't want to be kings of new york we don't want to be kings of cannabis yeah. We just want to smoke the best weed with the best people. That's it. If you were to have a secondary location, let's say they, they legalize, everything was good, where would be the first stop to put the second location besides New York? New York? Oh, besides or, New York, yeah. I don't know. Overseas. I mean, you know, Amsterdam's always been, you know. Barcelona was pretty incredible. Some nice closure. That'd be a cool thing. And then there's a couple of spots in America that I, everywhere, dude, honestly, Jersey. every city, every Look, town needs a place like this. Jersey. And it doesn't even have to be us, Astro Club, but like everybody needs a place like this. Jersey's yeah. ahead of us in terms of uh, legalization. They're going to have consumption lounges and, and I think good weed soon. And it's you know close to new york but you know care. la like we we're, we're out in la all the time we'd love to figure something out in in california like you know that's that's a uh, been something we've been talking about for a long time um you know we had that couple parties out there that that went really well um and we want to keep doing things out there and internationally so we'll see what happens yeah i would yeah. love to do one in la just i i, I need a for me <laughs> that's why i <laughs> like this place because yeah you're always like where are you you know where are you gonna meet where are you gonna go some people you don't want to have over to your house some people don't want you over to their house um sometimes i don't want to be at my house yeah so yeah, nah, they need a good spot for real because yeah, it's just we, not want to do it actually yeah if it's not me i will be jealous for that one <laughs> yeah, i'll be honest but everywhere else it's, yeah. it's crazy because what they do is and i wanted to touch on this before They'll sell the license for like a couple million dollars. And then the people who buy the license will sit on it, not open anything up and be like, either one day we'll open it up or we're going to flip this for double what we paid. And then six, eight, 10 years go by and they're like, didn't they sell eight licenses? There's a few I don't know if you can do it licensed. I don't know if it works think, with a license. Like I never mm. thought it did. People are talking now about Astro Club model. People are talking about social club models, talking about consumption lounges and other weird euphemisms for places you can smoke weed like but yeah. um so possibly they'll figure it out there's a few components that are necessary for it to be um successful i think but and so whether they allow those components or not um i'm not optimistic about it at this point so i just feel like wherever it's done you got to just i don't think it can be something that's licensed 
Do you think that, and this is, I mean, this might be too in the business, but do you think that if you don't sell weed at the location, like the actual, like, cause this is the thing. Most bars sell alcohol. Let's say that it was BYOB though. Can you still survive as a hospitality place? No way. Those bars, that's why those bars owners, they don't want to even get in the weed space because they can't make as much money as they do selling booze. I mean, they can sell 10 expensive drinks a night to people. So their original idea was to have limit it to, you know, a gram per purchase or something like that in the consumption lounges they look at it as a club model they think you could do it like a, a bottle of liquor and you know do it 10 times the price and like serve it it's, maybe it doesn't work i don't know but um, yeah i mean good luck for those who try it i just yeah. don't know i don't see like I, for us that's not us you know it's gotta be some type of membership model and yeah you need to be able to purchase on site and that should be statewide laws like it is for dispensaries but there limits. might be a way to do it with memberships there might be like but again, you do it with memberships like that, then it's a high-end club. Then you're talking about a membership that's like out of reach for, you know, most, you know, like you have to charge a lot of money. You know, you're, you're looking at what, a few thousand dollars a year and you have to have a lot of money behind it to be able to build something up to, to make that work. They so. did it in Amsterdam already. It's out there. It's not like we're reinventing the wheel even or Barcelona or yeah, but other they're allowed to sell, sell and the whole way that they're selling out in Amsterdam is broken. Yeah. Like it's a broken model. They, they've been dealing with a, they it's deal with a bunch of bullshit. Me for sure. I know well, they're not yeah. like, they're not even have, you know, it's just like some bullshit the way it's like, Oh yeah. Then it just shows up at the club and we can, yeah, we can There's it's just to be some guys, but they're it. doing the experimental project with 10 licenses right now. So we'll yeah. see how that goes and stuff, but hopefully they get, make some lead way and like, being able to do things right and not be fucked with and just run your business and there's no reason the bet you know the center of weed should be amsterdam i mean you know like they have an agricultural history and stuff but it really was just about the laws it was just Absolutely. because they were so lax there so everyone moved there i think that was just a moment in time we grew up in the middle of that moment of time so it felt so permanent but i don't really think that Amsterdam is going to be like a super relevant weed spot in 20 years. I think New York will be way more relevant when we, you know, get up to where everyone is in Cali. I'm, I'm nostalgic for Amsterdam. Well, that's what it is. For, for me, it, it's it makes just me like, sad, but they just pass feel, rules. You can't smoke in the red light district. Like you can't smoke on the street. They're trying to do away with it. They yeah, want yeah. to stop it, which doesn't make sense. Cause like, well, why'd you create it then? They Pretty regret crazy. it now. They a well, lot they say that, that it's yeah. tourists, tourists and bachelor well, parties are ruined. It is, you know. It's but it's been known as like what, just the place, the international place where it's like you go to, you can smoke weed. All this stuff is a lot of the stuffs in this, like the red light, where all the kind of center of all that stuff is is in the center of the city it's like the most expense should be the most expensive real estate in the city and the people who there are people who live there and now their it's properties are out. worth so much money and they don't want to have like <laughs> drunk people throwing up outside their spot and that's really more of an alcohol like the it's, weed, again it's more get rid of the red light district and get rid of and leave the, the coffee shops people. yeah the weed people don't call again there's no like, why are we always so worried about weed and the weed purple people it's like it's not it's as a, bad as it's coffee all the fucking sex shows and bullshit right. they got going yeah. on down there don't worry about the weed <laughs> people known the weed as people the party the spot thing. of the yeah, world it's you know crazy. It's, it's not the weed the, the shenanigans weed. is coming from the you know all the alcohol you know, and yeah, everything alcohol, else alcohol, and then the the crazy shit they got going on down there don't you think the mentality should be though that's fine with amsterdam go ahead and do that yeah our mentality in california and I, I can't speak for new york would be like open arms to all the ogs from amsterdam we would love to have you back bro or have you here especially yeah. in cali too like we'd love bring all those seeds all those genetics bring all that ip and all that extra and come closer to us we will embrace sure. you we would love to do bring some of that great white shark back bring some of those strains white back rhino. collabs and have you way closer so that we can fast forward this whole industry together when the closer amsterdam comes to california and you know us all together new york florida and everywhere in between spain australia texas i mean on and on this the closer we get the better this industry is gonna get like it's only like people say oh it's gotten worse it's gotten worse we are progressing though 
we're progressing in a direction and we're also learning not to lose strains not to learn lose history like we will never have i don't think we'll ever have it to where we're like what happened to that one strain skunk people are preserving things now there's a lot more guys making seeds of You're things as down for growing the smelliest strain people got nervous about everyone who grew skunk but got busted every landlord but i know had to walk the house so you had to shit then yeah. what if sour has gone just from genetic drift what if it's just all these plants only have a limited lifespan and we're supposed to be crossing them who knows we'll see now right but are they talking about now? like the bananas all are about to get wiped out because those are all clones too i think it's weird though because don't we have originals frozen you would think like as a nation or as a, a world we would preserve genetics especially for our food things that are so important it's like yeah you can you can freeze things you know, right in hyper suspension and things and be like okay in 30 40 years we're gonna pull this out and regrow this or i've been talking about this with cannabis for a while because we got into everyone's in tissue culture where there's other things where you can actually freeze in liquid nitrogen suspension genetics right for and as long as there's backup generators and someone's working the project 50 years later you can come get that genetic so like the money's behind it it's legal now so now you're not investing money yeah. into something illegal it's like these projects should get off the ground more, but I feel like yeah, Amsterdam now was gelato. Now you're just freezing a lot of gelato seeds. It's too late. There's a whole room of LCG, yeah. and it has a thousand we, names. LCG is going to sell dollars to back it all up. But it's you all get LCG. that culture. We've tested a thousand strains the that have been sent in, and they're all what? the same genetic. In 20 years, we're going to all we're going to be having sitting here being like. I really miss that LCG. You remember how great it tasted? I Where did be, that no. go? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a big fan. Uh, no. What was your favorite thing in Amsterdam smoking when you were back way back in the day? You have one strain that you just loved back then? I remember coming for the first time and I think Morning Glory won the cup. And I just remember that being the first thing I smoked. Great name. Yeah, from uh, Barney's. Barney's I was the great. Hindu Kush. I always smoked a lot of Hindu Kush. I smoked a lot of the Calio. Uh, I smoked a lot of, back then I was smoking a lot of Silver Haze, Silver Pearl, before it was the Super Silver Haze even. Like I, when they made it Super Silver Haze, I was like, ah, oh, it's so whack. It was so much better before when it was just the Silver Haze. The Silver the Amnesia Pearl, that's haze. a weird one. That's a when crazy When the Amnesia smell. Haze came yep. a couple years later. That amnesia was, was, yeah, a yeah, bunch was, later. That came out of when they were doing the NL5 hazes and all that stuff. When the NL5 haze came out, I loved the Shiva skunk. I used to love all the stuff that they had at Gray Area from Sacra Mother. Um, those blueberry, the bliss, whatever, the blueberry cross to the bubble gum back in the day. That was, that was so delicious. Again, because it was sweet probably. We loved it too. So can't deny people love sweet shit. Yeah. Um, Oh yeah, the old school blueberries. I mean, that's yeah, reminiscent I miss of some that so much. really good candies the today, the LCGs and stuff. I've had that where I'm like, oh, yeah. there's a little bit of that in there. I was in Santa Cruz for a summer and the only thing I could get was this super dank blueberry from the mountain. And it was just like some of the best blueberry I ever smoked. Uh, what else was I smoking? I loved uh, Homegrown Fantasy. I can't even remember. They had the Cali Orange. They had, they're gone now. We will embrace you, Amsterdam OGs, please. But Don't again, that's what I'm saying. It moves. It, it was Santa, it was California. Mm -hmm. It was Amsterdam. Back to California. Reefer Man did a ton of stuff in Canada. There was like a moment in Canada where he could do these huge breeding projects. One of like a really amazing breed a lot of those genetics like ended up in barney's that might even been a reefer man thing. I think Mr. Nice was out there for a while too. Yep. Vancouver and all that, you know. Yep. It, it, it's almost like wherever they embrace it and they don't tax the shit out of you right canada they had a lot of and sharks. there aren't a lot of robberies and crime around it too yeah kind of a normal living of something that you're passionate about it we're will all succeed outlaws. we've all got like anyone who's doing this is kind of an outlaw so we're willing to move around if we have to to do what we want to do passion yeah shit you guys got any shout outs no <laughs> <laughs> that's a new york thing for sure that is. <laughs> but, uh, no you, you no, got, i want to say no nah, seriously it. though dude like there's way too many people yeah so many people, yeah but like, like, it was so know, many shout people out to the first 250 everybody. people who got you know when i first started <laughs> it was 20 dollars for the first 200 people for a lifetime membership the people was basically like just see who's got faith in us a lot of people were like nah how do i know you're going to be here next week and i was like you don't 
So shout out to those first 250 people who supported us and got, got that. A fucking deal. Yep. <laughs> uh, Blazy Trey, Josh from uh, Wonder okay. Brett, Josh from Natura. Oh, early Josh. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. people who helped us like early. Up. Shout out to Sylvester Still Stone. Shout out to I'm forgetting <laughs> so many people. Chris Vidal, Scotch, uh, BK the God. Uh, I'm forgetting so many people. Who is Susan? Susan, like I, I can't even think. Of Everyone who works here, Taylor, Kalia, uh, Massimo, our amazing people in the front. Lou, Dre, Sadiq, who am I forgetting? I forget that. Bruna. Uh, <laughs> no, I think you got everybody. Right. Yeah, tip and tip, tip the people, man. I'm forgetting tip people. Them, wow. yeah. You guys know I appreciate you. Everybody who's ever helped us, who's oh, introduced Ryan. us to people. Um, Roger, for sure. Puffco and Hope Lord, for sure. Just thank you guys. Like I, I, I hope people, Ted, Ted from Alien Labs, yeah. everybody, man. Like I, we love you guys all. We, you know, there's a lot of bullshit in this community. People are emotional. There's a lot of ego involved. Doja, but at the end of the day, Doja, everybody, higher empire, happy monkey, um, work and roll, work, work and rolls, roll. uh, high garden. Everyone who's doing it, we're doing it for because we love weed and again we just want to be around kind people and we love you guys if you love us if not fuck you <laughs> where can they find where, where, where can they find you guys online astro club nyc at uh on instagram at astro club nyc and you're also at the astro club NYC, nyc as yeah. well correct yeah that's a real those both are real They're both profiles real. yeah that's the backup page yo if you're in new york city if you're coming to new york city hit up the astro club see if you can fall through their establishment enjoy some of the best herb some of the best curations and uh you might run into you know your next business partner or next person you collaborate with it's highly likely i highly recommend this place it's a vibe all dope people if you know you know and Stasser Club, man, New York City. One of the things we're going to get into on off the mic is I want to know your pinch yourself moment, like someone you smoked with that you were like, man, this is this is pretty cool. This is, this, you know, we'll get into that on off the mic, though. You got to get, you know, FSOTD.com, all that. Shout out Grow Generation. Shout out Dr. Dabber. Shout out Drip Hydro, all our sponsors, man. New York City. Yo, New York City live right here. Stasser Club, episode 93, first smoke of the day. Peace. Thank you.